General Ventilation Scheme for Growing Oyster Mushrooms Hi all! Oyster Mushroom Expert with you. Today I will talk about ventilation in the oyster mushroom growing room. When an oyster mushroom grows, it releases a lot of carbon dioxide and moisture, which must be removed. In addition, the mycelium in the substrate also releases carbon dioxide and moisture, but much less. The easiest way to remove waste products is to create air movement in the chamber. Such a jet of air blowing through the room through holes or windows located opposite each other on opposite walls. This can be done if the weather conditions are close to those necessary for the growth of oyster mushrooms. Due to the fact that the wind speed in this case is low, some amount of carbon dioxide lingers near the mushrooms. And some strains of oyster mushrooms can lengthen the stem. Therefore, if you are growing mushrooms for yourself only, or they are only on the floor, you can do without ventilation. Just keep the distance between racks or rows of mushroom blocks at least 1 meter. Then carbon dioxide will be better removed from the room. However, if the growing chamber contains a large amount of substrate, and growing oyster mushrooms is your business, ventilation is indispensable. Mushroom growers who grow oyster mushrooms have a wide variety of ventilation systems. I prefer the proven air movement pattern that is used in mushroom cultivation and adapted for oyster mushroom cultivation. Today we will consider the scheme of such ventilation. First we need to mix the outside air with the air from the grow room. Pipes and dampers are used to mix the air. The dampers regulate the amount of air that comes in from outside. The ventilation system that uses the internal air of the chamber is called recirculation. And the air itself is called internal or recirculated. Why do we need recirculated air? After all, we can only use outside air. Yes, we can use it. But, we need to warm or cool the outside air to the optimum temperature. Different strains of oyster mushroom grow at different temperatures. There are strains that have enough temperature from plus 8 to plus 10 degrees Celsius. They are called winter strains. And there is oyster mushroom, which grows well at a temperature of plus 26 degrees. In our country, such strains are called summer strains. But, in any case, we need to prepare the air before it enters the chamber. The air must have a certain temperature and a certain humidity. We understand that outdoor air does not have these conditions. And we need a lot of air. If there are 10 tons of substrate in the growing chamber, we need to prepare 2,500 cubic meters of air every hour. It can be very expensive to warm or cool this amount of air. Sometimes this is simply not possible, as the equipment does not cope with such a task. But in the chamber we already have air that has the optimum temperature, and, very importantly, the optimum humidity too. We can use it. Thus, we will facilitate the task of preparing air for ourselves. What percentage of recirculated air can be used? 40% or 50%, sometimes even 60%. It is important for us that the mushrooms are not deformed, beautifully shaped. And we could sell them for a good price. Therefore, we look at the condition of the mushrooms and empirically determine how much recirculated air can be used. So we mix the air. It then passes through a heat exchanger where it is heated. Or through a cooler that is powered by a compressor or chiller. The air is cooled there. The heat exchanger and cooler externally look almost the same. The difference is that hot water flows through the pipes of the heat exchanger, and freon or cold water enters the cooler. Further, the fan sucks this air through the pipe into the duct. The fan must be centrifugal. You can use such a fan. It is called a duct centrifugal fan. Or like this. In our country it is called snail. After the fan is a humidifier. The air must be humidified before entering the central duct. If humidifiers are located in the chamber itself separately from the air flow, then dry air from the air duct and separately drip moisture will flow to the mushrooms. Because of this, small mushrooms will die from condensation, and those that have grown a little will dry. 
Side air ducts diverge from the central air duct. These air ducts have nozzle cups. Through them, air blows into the floor and takes carbon dioxide and moisture from the mushrooms. Then part of the air flow is returned to the recirculation system. The second part of the flow is brought out by the axial fan of the hood. The amount of air that comes out through the hood should be equal to the amount of air that came in from the street. Here is a ventilation scheme. Formulas are used to calculate the power of the equipment and the diameters of the duct pipes. I have a table of ready-made ventilation calculations for small chambers with a capacity from 1 ton to 8 tons of substrate. I have a video about this table in detail, it also tells how to buy it. The link will be in my comment on this video. That's all for today, have a nice day everyone.